Hey guys, Zach here with Minimal Escapes, and today I'm going to be going over my top three cleanup crew members for small tanks. Now, a cleanup crew member is an animal that's not really for display inside of a tank. It's more there to keep the tank running in your stead, and they're very important for things like ecosystem tanks or planet tanks. They're the animals in there that are going to eat the algae or eat the decaying matter or botanicals that are breaking down, those sorts of things. And they're really helpful to you, so let's get into it. Alright, so in number three, we've got Otto Winkless Catfish, better known as Ottos. Now these guys are a staple in the aquarium hobby, and there's a good reason for that, right? If you go to an aquarium store asking for a small fish that eats algae, if they know what they're talking about, they're recommending autos, right? They're just so good. These fish are native from South America. They're about two inches long at max, so they're going to be just small enough to fit into most tanks. The only downside to them is that they are schooling fish, so you need at least three of them. But as long as you have three, you're set and they're gonna be happy as long as they're in your tank. And as far as algae eating capabilities go, these guys will just eat most algaes. You know, they're gonna stray away from any of the harder algae, something like a green spot algae that's stuck on the glass or stuck on rocks they're not gonna be able to peck at, but any of the softer algaes or any like brown diatoms, they're gonna go crazy on and they're gonna disappear overnight right they just love that so much another upside to them is that they love to eat that white kind of fungus that shows up on some woods when you put it into an aquarium so if you're struggling with that I would recommend these guys to you another fun thing about them is that unlike other catfish they are diurnal which means they're out and about during the daytime with some other species of catfish you can run into the issue of them being nocturnal but these guys out and about, as I just said, and it's really fun to watch them interact and play around with each other. And they're super peaceful too. So if you have a small community going in a 20 gallon, these guys are not going to be a problem. You're going to be able to put them in and you shouldn't really see any fighting. Now coming in at number two is going to be shrimp. This is going to include your neocaridinas as well as just your caridina shrimp. For the sake of this video, I'm going to focus solely on one of each. So in the Caridina, it's going to be the Amano Shrimp, and in Neo Caridina, it's going to be Cherry Shrimp. So in regards to Amano Shrimp versus Cherry Shrimp, in purely a cleanup crew's per perspective, I would say that Amano Shrimp are a little bit better than your standard Cherry Shrimp. Now, this is probably due to a multitude of factors, but what I've noticed is that Amano shrimp are much more active than cherry shrimp. I find that they'll swim around the tank and they'll scoot from spot to spot to spot, whereas cherry shrimp really like to sit and kind of graze for a couple of minutes before moving on. But Amano shrimp are just go, 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 go. Amano shrimp are also slightly larger than cherry shrimp, so this can contribute. They're just going to be able to eat more than a smaller cherry shrimp. But one of the downsides to Amano shrimp is they're a very base tone of gray, kind of clear, so if you're looking for something that disappears into the background, a mono shrimp really are going to be a good option, and they're not going to detract from any of your show fish that might be in the tank. But cherry shrimp are much more colorful. They'll add that pop of color, right? You've got just your standard reds, you've got blues, you've got greens, you've got yellows, you've got oranges, you've got every color under the sun you could think of, so... They're a great way to add color in, but they're going to still clean the algae just a little bit slower than Amano's. As far as cherry shrimp go, is I would recommend them as well if you're looking for something that's much more, I guess, budget friendly. Right? You're going to have a much easier time breeding Neo Caridinas than Caridinas. So, cherry shrimp being Neos are going to be much easier to breed. And if you start with like 12 and you've got four females and each of them have. 30 eggs say only half of them survive in a community tank well that's now 60 shrimp and you can distribute them to other tanks so looking at it budget wise sometimes you might want to consider cherry shrimp now coming in at the number one spot the cleanup crew member that i think is the most important for any tank you set up this is something that i would put in every single tank and i do in fact have in every single tank that is going to be 
ram's horn snails. Now these guys are phenomenal algae eaters and they're great in every single tank. Now I know that a lot of people find snails more pest than helpful for tanks, but I really got three main reasons why I really love ram's horn snails. Now, reason number one is going to be their ability to eat the algae that everything else is kind of going to miss. Now, there's not many animals that go about doing it, but snails are one of the few that can get green spot algae off of glass and rocks. Now, this is due to their tongue, or tongue-like appendage that they've got, which has rows of teeth, and it's very flexible and bendable, so it can go along scraping that off. So. It's something that can help you with those trickier algaes. Now my second reason for ram's horns being number one is going to be budget. Bang for your buck, I would put ram's horns against any because while well, you might only buy like five to start, you can just breed them and breed them and breed them and breed them inside your tank and just get enough to go in every single one of your tanks without really any effort and not too much struggle. But if you're not really looking to breed them, per se, in a tank, the solution that I found is just try not to overfeed that tank. I know it sounds simple, but the overfeeding of a tank is what leads to a big boom in snail population, what I found. But if you keep your feeding down to a minimum level, then your fish are going to be happy and the snails aren't going to breed because a snail is going to have to look for much more food and it's going to be harder for them to allocate resources to breeding and reproducing. Now my final reason for having ram's horns at number one is just going to be the things that they do for the tank outside of getting rid of algae. Now this is two things mainly. The first is being their waste production. Since they're chugging along 24 seven, they produce that much more waste than shrimp and autos, at least I found that. And this waste might sound bad to some people, but to me, what it sounds like is it's going to break down, go into my substrate, and feed my plants so that my plants can grow even more. And that's very appealing to me. The second thing is when ram's horns do die, what you have left over is the shell. Now, the shell's really helpful in snail tanks because it's a calcium boost. So you can throw that into a tank or you can crush it up and feed it to your shrimp, and it's going to help them with their calcium. All right, so that's it for this video on cleanup crew members. Hopefully you guys found this helpful and you're gonna maybe refer to this when you're thinking about the algae eaters that you wanna get in your tank. But if you did enjoy, please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys later. Peace.